Chris, what is our fifth main topic today? Our fifth topic is from Jeremy. The Batgirl story just keeps hanging around. James Gunn and Peter Safran were asked about the Batgirl movie, and if under their leadership, that movie could possibly get a release now that they're in charge. But they said the movie was not releasable. Ouch. What do you think of their comments, and do you think this will finally put the whole Batgirl story to rest? Thanks. All right, Jeremy, thanks a lot for that. So, of course, the other day, um, at Warner Brothers slot, Peter Safran, James Gunn, the co-CEOs of the new Diz, uh, DC Studios, they had a secret kind of press event where they pulled together players from all the major trades and stuff like that. And then the next day they put out the report about here's everything that's coming with DC. Now, apparently at that event, Peter Safran and James Gunn, because they are the new sheriffs in town and Batgirl was canceled, not on their watch. Somebody reasonably asked them the question, Hey, now that you guys are the ones in charge, is there any chance you guys might want to look at, you know, given Batgirl a release. And Peter Safran said something that I think is really, really interesting because it kind of goes along with what we've been saying before. But this comes to us from the folks over at IndieWire who wrote the following. I saw the movie, Safran said at the DC presentation in Los Angeles. There were a lot of incredibly talented people in front of and behind the camera on that film. But that film was not releasable. It happens sometimes. That film was not releasable, he added. I actually think that David Zaslav and the team made a very bold and courageous decision to cancel it because it would have hurt DC and it would have hurt those people involved. I think they really stood up to support DC, the characters, the story, and the quality and all that. And that, of course, comes from Peter Safran, who is now the new co-CEO with James Gunn um, over at DC when James Gunn and Peter were asked about the future of this. You know... Word started coming out about Batgirl that it was not looking good. And Rob, both you and I spoke to people who had seen the film. And I don't know, I can't remember exactly what they told you, but what they told me, the word embarrassing was used. Yeah. And as David Zaslav was coming in, and I know everybody say, no, you should just release it anyway. But when David Zaslav, who's coming in and recognizes something that no Warner Brothers leadership has ever recognized, DC is our most valuable thing. No other Warner Brothers execs ever recognize that or acknowledge that. David Zaslav comes in and says, DC is our number one thing. And we've got to treat it like it is. And this movie, now again, I'm speaking as somebody who has spoken to people who've seen it, but I myself have not. But every report we have heard from people who have actually seen the film is like, you couldn't release this movie. I mean, you could have, but it once again, DC already has a bad reputation compared to Marvel. So this movie, this is what it's going to accomplish. You're going to lose more money by finishing all the effects on it. You're then going to worsen the reputation of DC as a whole. You might actually hurt the careers of the people involved because we've all seen it happen a, a couple of times where some maybe aspiring, talented people appear in a movie that really sucks and then all of a sudden you don't see them around anymore. And we, we've been making this argument for a while that, listen, if the movie was truly that bad, you can't put it out. And I understand, because Rob, to your point that you were saying a little bit earlier, if you're the director of something like this, such a high profile film, it's a humiliating thing to say that, that the studio is saying, listen, your movie's so bad, we can't put it out. But would, have, would it have been worse if they did put it out and let the world see how bad it, and listen, everybody has a bad day at the office. It doesn't mean the directors of Batgirl, who are also the directors of Bad Boys for Life, doesn't mean they're not great directors and don't have great futures, but every director has had a bad day at the office and made something crappy. And DC decided, or Warner Brothers decided to step in and say, according to Peter Safran, and say, listen, we number one, need to protect our brand because this is going to hurt our brand. Number two, we need to protect the people who are involved in it because releasing this is, you may want it released, you can say publicly you want it released, but we know this isn't going to be doing those people any favors. And so I, I agree with you. I think this should put this whole Batgirl story now to rest. Now that you had new people come in, and apparently Zaslav did give Gunn and Safran the authority if they wanted to, said, it's your studio now. If you want to put this out, this is your call now. But they were like, yeah, no, we can't. No, <laughs> we cannot put this movie out. Anyway, Rob, you hear Peter Safran's comments here. What do you make of it? I mean, first of all, for him to come out and say it, I think that was he was definitively putting a period on this question. I mean, it's over. 
And and he was saying that he came flat out said it's unreleasable. And the fact that he followed it up by saying it would hurt the people. Look, these two directors, if this movie had come out and been not good, like Pitoff's Catwoman, have you have you noticed Pitoff directing? Yeah, haven't seen A-list. a lot of Pitoff's name around. Yeah, not lately. a lot of Pitoff no. uh, directing feature films here in the country. Uh, it's probably best. Now, our directors are going to get another high-profile franchise property to direct. They're going to have two under their belts that people can look and go, this kind of movie these guys can do. If this had come out, it could have torpedoed their careers and you never would have heard from them again. And our actress, who's a talented actress. I mean, it's... I it's, love her. I love her. I was great. very excited when she got cast I, in I agree. She's great. And, you know, it, it'll be an interesting Hollywood footnote. People can talk to her at cocktail parties. What was it like? Maybe she'll someday be another comic book character in the DC universe later on. Who knows? But I think in the long run, I hate to see all the work that people did not be seen. But on the other hand, probably it's best that it not be seen. And by the way, I want to throw this out there too. If the movie is nearly as bad as everybody is saying it is, she could never be Batgirl again. By not releasing this movie, James Gunn, Peter Safran, and we know the Bat family is coming in, it at least leaves them the option to still let Leslie Grace play Batgirl later on down the line. Whereas if this movie came out and sucked and it tanked and everybody hated it, they could never use her again. Now, maybe they can use her as, again, we don't know that that's what they're going to do. I'm saying it at least leaves them the option and the possibility. Anyway, Chris, you heard Peter Safran's comments here. What do you think of them? Do you agree with Rob that this kind of this ends it now? There's nowhere left to go with this. This is how did you put it? This is the final period on yeah, it. Yeah, you put yeah. a period on that. Yeah. There's, there's no, no longer, longer a question an ellipses. mark. Oh. <laughs> we went with different punctuation. That's okay. <laughs> oh. That's all right. I I think it does. I think it really does. And I love that Peter Safran finally phrased this in a way too of everyone involved in this is very talented and are people that he wants to continue to work with and have relationships with. And this not only would have hurt the studio, but it would have hurt these people as well. These performers, these production folks, it wouldn't have been a win-win for anybody. Everyone would have suffered from this. And I love that he goes on to say too, that Batgirl inevitably is going to be in the mix. So to your point, John, you know, I really hope that we bring Leslie back in here. I really hope she gets a fair shake at this with a Batgirl that was always destined for the big screen, with a Batgirl that gets the budget she deserves, the you know spectacle she deserves and i hope a lot of these players come back to be involved in that now by the way it is important to note too that uh, the directors lrb and fala who also did a number of episodes of miss marvel as you pointed out yeah. and they did a great job on that one of the first things that james gunn and peter saffron did once they took over was they actually took a meeting with they sat down and had a meeting yes. with those guys right and they said listen we do want to work with these guys again in the future this one didn't work out but just because you had one bad day, does uh, one bad project, one bad day at the office, that doesn't mean you still don't have it and you're not still great. I mean, hell, Steven Spielberg made the frickin' Terminal, and now he oh. made the Fable. <laughs> well, oh, oh, now oh, he wait, oh, now then fighting worse. But John, you you know you're absolutely right. I mean, <laughs> it's not like they developed that project. Sometimes directors are hired like if you get to if you get hired to direct a, a script for a studio, you might not get a lot of the input that you need to make the script what it is. So you take the job hoping that it's going to be, you're going to be able to do uh, the job you you can do on it, but you can't necessarily change the DNA of what the script and the story is. So they might've turned in good work, but the project itself, the conception of it was beyond saving. All right, guys, question is for you. We've now heard from the, one of the CEOs of DC pictures, Peter Safran saying, yeah, that that yeah, we, I I could release it if I want to, but that movie is unreleasable and we needed to protect the brand and protect the people involved in it. I don't know. What do you think of his comments? I'm kind of now past I think to me this Batgirl thing is now that's a def- I think Rob's right. This definitively ends the whole thing. But how do you feel about it? Do you think his comments were sensitive? Do you think they were appropriate? Do you think they were harsh? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Fume. Be smart. Don't start. Kick the habit. 
put it out before it puts you out. All phrases we've heard a hundred times, and yet we still continue to have bad habits. Today's sponsor, Fume, is on a mission to accelerate humanity's breakup from the bad habits that consume far too many of us. Fume is a natural diffusive device that uses plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habit for a positive one. You see, Fume is not a vape. It's a non-electronic device designed to transform your negative habits. Because instead of pods filled with potentially harmful chemicals like a vape, Fume uses cores infused with plants like peppermint and cinnamon for delicious natural flavors. And Fume's new version 2 model is snappy and tactile. With an adjustable airflow dial and a magnetic end cap, your fingers will always have something to do. The device itself is really attractive, and once I popped in the core and took my first inhale of it, it tasted fantastic. Guys, the easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one, and Fume is designed to perfectly do just that. So head over to tryfume.com and use the promo code CAMPIA to save 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. The Journey Pack comes with three unique flavors and the new version 2 Fume to help kickstart your positive habits. That's tryfume, T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com and use the code CAMPIA to save an additional 10% off your order today.